everyone. My name is Coach Devin Buchanan, and welcome to Youth Uncut. Youth Uncut is a show that gives youth a voice and an opportunity to discuss the things that mean most to them. Uh, I'm super excited today, and I, and I know I say that almost every show, but today really is a special show uh, because today we have a young lady that I truly um, admire and, and recognize, you know, just the effort um, that she's putting in to truly pursue her dreams. Uh, today we have Amaje Hardy Jones. How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And I and I, I really do mean that. Like, oh. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I know I'm honored to have you on. Um, and as I said, you know, when we first mm -hmm. talked is that uh, I really I really love to invest and, and love to watch young people who are truly passionately pursuing their dreams. Yeah. And so uh, thank you for joining us and sharing with the city uh, about how you're just doing this. Oh, so, of course. Thanks thank you for very having much. me. This so, is awesome. Yeah, so we'll get right into it because I know that we have a lot to talk about. Um, and, and there's just so much that I think that we can um, give to our young people and our viewers out there. So first, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Ah. Um, tell us, uh, you know, some of your interests. Where'd you go to school? Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, of course. What's up, everyone? Uh, My name is Amaje Hardy Jones. I'm a 20-year-old actress based in Philadelphia. Um, graduated from the Christian Academy. Shout okay. out to class of 2019. 02, class of 02, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was raised in a Christian private school mostly all my life, uh, two different Christian schools. Mm -hmm. um, my faith is a huge part of who yes. I am, and I strongly believe it's where I am today because of my faith mm -hmm. and just how, you know, beautiful it is for my great grandmother to speak so much life to her daughter, to her daughter, and then eventually to me, yeah. and my sisters. That's awesome. So I'm I'm where I am today because of him, and I give all honor and praise to him for yeah. giving me a dream and a passion to pursue acting, my talk show as well, to yeah. be able to follow my dreams wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. I think that's just something I don't take for granted. Yeah. And the community that God has presented to me, you know, within a time span of COVID and everything that's been going on, really, it, it, it's been a blessing. And I'm excited to talk about it, even though I'm rambling. But that's just a little bit about me. I'm a bit faith-based. I got to <laughs> talk about God. Absolutely. Because he's, yeah, he's everything to me. And, and listen, I... That is one thing that we certainly share. You know, yeah. as you said, we both are graduates of the Christian Academy um, and recognize how faith has played such a part in our ability to just passionately pursue those dreams and, mm -hmm. and what keeps us motivated, right? Yeah. Um, I think faith for me is the thing that um, is the foundation for what I show to the world, yeah. right? What I show to my students mm -hmm. um, on a daily basis to help to motivate them. And so I can appreciate you letting that faith shine. So thank you so much. Yeah, yes. You know, I, I want to get into, um, you know, the acting, but before we kind of get into the acting, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I really believe in is this idea of core memories. Mm. And so the things that you think back on when you're younger yeah. that kind of you're like oh I can remember that moment and that pushed me do mm. you have anything that you can share with us uh, uh, from when you were younger that was like this is maybe the one thing that <laughs> pushed me a little bit forward yeah especially with my acting career I remember three-year-old Amaje obsessed with the Cinderella Brandy and Whitney yeah. Houston version oh wow okay watched it on repeat every day mm -hmm. and it got to the point where this three-year-old young girl would mimic everything that they were doing. Now, yeah. this is a musical. Yeah. So they're singing, they're dancing, they're acting. And this three-year-old young girl is doing all three of those things, singing, dancing, acting. Could, you know, can barely speak. So I wasn't on point with mm -hmm. the words. Yeah. But you could tell that there was a magical moment that happened within yeah. me. And it's beautiful because my mom records everything. She mm -hmm. takes pictures of everything. So looking back on that, I always do to remind myself why I'm pursuing acting and realizing that it's not just for me, but it's because I believe that I can share stories. Mm -hmm. I believe that representation matters yeah. and you know everyone's story no matter who you are deserves to be told yeah. so again like musical theater has always been a huge part of me you know gradually getting older I will always do little skits I would always yeah. mimic Disney movies I was a huge Disney buff when I was a kid kind of still am now it's a huge mm -hmm. part of who I am accept it and I'm fine with it and it, it's it's beautiful because it's so humbling and yeah. i'm always reminded of that every day yeah. <laughs> right actually right now i have every um 
charm of mine of every Disney movie that I um, watched when I was a kid. Oh, wow. And it's gradually growing because I'm reflecting back on that. I was a huge Lilo and Stitch fan, yeah, yeah. huge Aristocats fan. And I don't know, it's just one of those things where I look back on mm -hmm. and it's just like, wow, yeah, that passion was given to her That's at awesome. a really young age. That's awesome. And it still is with me yeah. at 20 years old. Wow. So it's just... It's that just is, amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. And it's really cool to hear how um, you can remember back to like such an early memory yeah. that, was, that was so <laughs> foundation in you. I remember, I literally remember the day I started reading. Aww. And most people were like, how do you remember? How so? And I just remember it clicking. And I'm sure so many of us can remember, um, have those core memories. And it might be, you know, something so trivial yeah but it's the thing that you're like yo that was the thing that really pushed me mm. into this and so now you're into acting yeah. um you're a 20 year old actress and so you know let's kind of talk about how you got into the you know we'll call it the industry right yeah. but um you know what were some of the early stages of you just trying to get into it, practicing, traveling. Mm -hmm. Like, what was that like when you were younger trying yeah. to really get into it? I mean, I started at the age of 14 to be technical. Okay. And I'll explain okay. to you why. <laughs> um, I so the passion, okay. the passion and, and the dedication was there. However, I was so reluctant in telling my parents about this dream because mm -hmm. no one knew how to go about doing this except for me who did the research. Mm -hmm. So you know, watching movies and shows, I'm thinking, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Like, they make it look so easy. So as I got older and older, finally hit my teenage years, and I worked up the nerve to tell my parents, like, hey, um, anybody know how to do acting? Yeah. How to get into this business? Yeah. And they were just like, uh, no, but, you know, we can research it if that's what you want to do. And I was just like, yeah, is there anything in Philadelphia that I can do to mm -hmm. get started? So that's where the training happened. That's where the, the church plays and the community plays started mm -hmm. tying in. And it was beautiful because it was in those moments where, in a sense, my mom saw what I already had in me, mm -hmm. that dream of, oh, wow, she, she really did a good job on this show. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see this dream. Let, let's, let's keep pouring into her. Mm -hmm. And so did my family, and so did my dad, and so mm -hmm. did my sisters. So it was always constantly putting myself out there in any way, shape, or form. So training, I had the honor and privilege of working with Nikia Dillard, who has his own performing arts school in Philadelphia called I Can Act. Okay. Go enroll. It's really, really great. What's it called? Uh, I Can Act. X A I K A N A C T S. Okay. He, um, Dakia Dillard, just a little bit about him. He's an amazing actor. He's a casting director as well, and he's done so much for me within my career. He mm. really kind of got me the exposure that I needed while I was in Philadelphia, yeah. and now I'm just trying my very best to brand out and to expose myself in different markets. Okay. So I trained there for. Whew, two to three years and there's a lot of things that go into it a mm -hmm. lot of things you know um camera setup yeah uh lighting um auditioning yeah. it's like to audition in person versus self-tape there's just so much that goes into it that it took me six years to get to where i am today yeah. and it's not stopping there mm -hmm. i'm still going as a result of that mm -hmm. and with all the training with all the workshops all the drivings to New York to do a show and then coming back. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something that I cherish. It's something that I don't take lightly because it's allowing me to grow and seeing, you know, where I was and where I am now. Yeah. Because there was a lot of growth that came into it. A mm -hmm. lot of mistakes I've made in the audition room that I don't make now. Yeah. But um, yeah, though, that's, that's the cultivating time for me. And I think God really has me in a season of reflecting and mm -hmm. being humble about it as well. Yeah. Because I didn't know about all these things. A lot of people had to pour their understanding of the business into me for me to be where I am mm -hmm. today. And there's a long, long list of people I want to thank and I want to keep it short. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. they know who they are. Of course they do, you know just how the business works, mm -hmm. how rejection can be, yeah. how, um, you know, this, this business has a way of picking people and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't devalue your worth, nor does it devalue how talented you are. Wow. In a sense, you know, with every no, there, there's a yes. You just have to keep working for mm -hmm. that yes. And I think 
with the six year journey is about to be seven in January. I've experienced a lot of no's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot, a lot of no's and some, you know, are harder to let go than others. But with all those no's I face, there's a beautiful growth and a beautiful picture that's drawn out to see that what God has for me mm-hmm. will be for me. Yeah. And all the doors that have closed, they have nothing compared to yes. Yeah. That is yet to come. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that's amazing. Um, I, I often talk to people about what I call the three selves, like mm-hmm. self-concept, self-esteem, and self-efficacy, and yeah. really um, how you view yourself, mm-hmm. and then how that makes you feel about yourself, mm-hmm. and then how that translates into the belief in what you can do. And I learned about yeah. self-efficacy in eighth grade at TCM, uh-huh. but um, I kind of want to talk about that. It's like, you know, we talked a lot about identity, or a little bit about identity before we came on camera, mm-hmm. um, and how do you view yourself right now? Like for me, um, I remember being younger and I saw myself as a baseball player, but I also, Mm -hmm. uh, I also struggled with my identity a lot, right? Um, You know, as a black male, have you, I'm trying to figure out how to form this question, but but like, are there any times where you struggled forming this identity as an actress? But then is, you know, personally as a as a black feet, as a black Yeah, feet. because you know, throughout high school, while I was thinking of what to do with my life, college was in the back of my mind, as all of us yeah. was. But um I don't know if this is God, I don't know if it was just my free will, yeah. but it was just saying that's not for you. That's not for you. It's okay if you're that one cheek that goes the other way. Yeah. And and don't worry about it. So 11th and 12th grade year, as I stated before, was the most challenging year of my life because not only am I doing something that's different than the custom or what everybody else is doing, but, you know, you find yourself losing your identity because you're worried about what other people think. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me. I was so worried about what other people would have thought if I didn't go to school, if I didn't go to college immediately. Mm -hmm. Like, what's that stigma that, oh, once you don't go to college, you won't get a proper job. You don't have that diploma, you're not going to get a good job. And listen, hear me out. I'm not saying school is bad. I'm just saying that I believe when God gives you a dream, I do believe this wholeheartedly. If yes. you put enough energy into it, it will come to pass. It's going to be hard. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's going to be hard because it is your dream and God will give you the stamina to keep going. I know that for sure. But I think that's what God was instilling in me, the stamina to say boldly like, hey, I don't want to go to college right now. I know it's always there. Yeah. The building is still there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but at the same time, I was just like, that's not what's for me right now. Mm-hmm. And it was hard for me to tell that to my friends. It was hard for me to tell that to my teachers. And after high school, graduating, mm-hmm. the pandemic hit hard on everybody. Yeah. And it was a standstill moment for me because I'm not going to say God took away that actress title for me but he gave me an understanding of who you are like who are you if i take that away from you yeah like who are you if you weren't acting and you can't go to auditions in person anymore like, mm-hmm. who, who are you what yeah. can you do and i had to reflect on myself i had to reflect on who am i as a person how how do i want others to view me mm-hmm. and that tied into my talk show aspire to inspire Ooh, I can't wait to talk about that. I can't <laughs> it wait. did it did because I had a reflection moment I've always been told all my life all my life that you have a light about you mm-hmm. I didn't understand what that meant mm-hmm. but I was always flattered when people tell you that you know you've been nice like oh thank you yeah. I appreciate it um but I've been told that multiple times throughout my life and I'm just like okay God you gave me this light I know this is from you allow me to use that yes. for my career and for my journey. So my wonderful mother, she talked with me like, hey, sweetie, listen, I understand you didn't go to college and I, I respect that. Mm-hmm. But you gotta do something and it's okay if you don't know right now. Yeah. But I think you have a wonderful speaking voice. I think you carry yourself in such a way that makes people wanna know more about you. Mm-hmm. And you know a lot about the industry. Somehow tie that all into one. Yeah. And it was just like, 
thanks, mom. Thanks so much for stealing <laughs> this anxiety in me. Now I don't know what to do. And, yeah. you know, since everything is turning virtual, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, that came into my mind and it was almost like God was giving me tiny pieces of like, mm -hmm. here, I'm trying to lead you Can you continue and yeah. keep yeah. going. Don't doubt. Don't be anxious. Just do it. And, um, whew. Yeah, it, it, aspire to aspire. It, it took time to come. I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. And it was almost as if it kind of hit me right then and there. It's hard to explain because it mm -hmm. took time, a lot yeah. of time during that pandemic. And once it finally hit, a lot of people would say, like, you're an inspiration for people. Like, yeah. I, I see that in you. I actually reflected back on my yearbook in 2019 before people wrote. And the common denominator was inspiration. You mm -hmm. followed your dreams. We were watching you. We admire that about you. And aspire to inspire. It came. It That's hit me awesome. like a, it hit me so quick. And I was just like, okay, what, what, what if I give insight of people who are in the business? I may not be up to their level as of yet. However, it's beautiful to hear of someone's journey Absolutely. and how they got to where they are. Absolutely. Uh, I'll never forget the feeling of reaching out to my very first guest. I was going to uh, ask you that. Like, <laughs> that's what, let me ask the question. Yeah. And then you come up. Because I was going to ask you, like, or do you just cold reach out on the DM, <laughs> slide in, like, hey, this is what I got? Like, how do you do uh, that? Not a lot of people ask me that. And mm -hmm. this is not to sound entitled. Mm -hmm. Or this is not to sound like, oh, I got connections. No, not at all. It took time for that to happen. Mm -hmm. But it's just a DM. Like, I tell people this, and they're just like, no, no, it's not. I'm like, no, seriously. I reach out to these people via Instagram. I give them a small little excerpt about myself mm -hmm. and what this platform is about mm -hmm. and how we just want to hear from industry professionals on why they began their journey and how they want to inspire others as a result of that. And I think with that being said, and people, you know, people having that common factor of wanting to be an inspiration for others because they're putting themselves on TV for a reason, mm -hmm. whether that's because of their love for it, whether that's because they want more representation, mm -hmm. whatever reason that may be, they have a journey in how they achieve that. Okay. And we all can, you know, relate to an inspiring story mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form. So I remember reaching out to my very first guest and shout out to Christopher Emanuel, who I'm forever in debt to, mm -hmm. because he said yes, first of all. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I sent the DM to him <laughs> and he said, yeah, sure, I love what you're doing. And it started as IG Lives. I talked to him. Mm -hmm. He was just, and what was beautiful was that um, after I interviewed him, talked about his journey, beautiful journey. Guys, go follow him. He's doing some amazing things right now. And after hearing his journey of how he got to where he is, he prayed after the interview, wow. saying, like, I feel the need to pray for you right now. Can wow. I can we? Yeah. And on live, prayed, and right afterwards, I bawled my eyes out. And I'm a crier. I, yeah. I can accept that. <laughs> I cried yes. because I wasn't upset. I wasn't worried. I wasn't anxious. Mm -hmm. I was so at peace that this is what I'm supposed to be doing yeah. in my season of waiting or post that while acting as well. I just believe that God has sent me each guest with the intentions of no, my child bigger, mm -hmm. no bigger, mm -hmm. bigger and bigger to yeah. the point where I'm now interviewing adults. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of started off with people around my age, yep. kind of went younger, and then I got to older. Mm -hmm. And each person I had the opportunity to talk to has instilled so much life into me yeah. that I know these interviews can impact young actors who want to get into the business or people who are already in the business and needs inspiration mm -hmm. like these no's and this rejection is like they're mentally they can destroy us yeah. they can really destroy us if we think about them way too much but i think these interviews they have a way of reminding me that this is what i'm supposed to be doing mm -hmm. and that hey okay i didn't go to college and that's okay but this route that god had for me it's it's designed for me because yes. of how many people I was able to touch, yes. how many people instilled so much life within me 
and the platform that I created. I have people reaching out to me like, Maj, I see you traveling internationally with this. I see you speaking at schools and seminars and to young people. I, I have always seen myself wanting to create a nonprofit for people in my lane who didn't feel the need to go to college. However, want to instill the arts mm -hmm. and being able to do that wholeheartedly because I was stuck in that boat mm -hmm. and I didn't know what to do. And if I hadn't done, well, if I would have done college, I don't think Aspire to Inspire would have ever came. No. I strongly believe it wouldn't have because I would be so worried about getting my diploma, which isn't a bad thing. Kids, get your diploma if you're in college. You got it. Keep mm -hmm. going. But it wouldn't have happened yeah. for me yeah. in a sense. No, I mean, you... <laughs> Pursuing your dreams in, in the way that they're supposed to be done yeah. takes time. It does. It does. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I often think about and I get emotional, you know, a lot of times about where I am right now and, yeah. and not not in a regretful way, but just thinking about how so many of, of, of us, I'm going to use that, mm -hmm. I'm going to say of us are pushed into things because the people around us don't know different mm, yeah. or haven't been pushed to do different. Mm. And so, you know, it's really amazing to see and to know that you were not, you did not succumb to what the, the society says that you have to. And, and, at, and at the hard. same time, you don't feel less of yourself for not taking the, whatever they call traditional route. Yeah. You know, um, I do believe aspire to inspire can be a platform that, inspires other kids to passionately pursue their dream but also I start to think about bridging that gap between kids who have a passion for specifically acting and then the skills or the connections or the things that they need as they you know as they yeah. go on you know you are starting to build a network of people that can provide insight that can mm. provide um, the resources so when you think about starting that nonprofit, Think about how you can be a resource to people, whether exactly. it be, you know, connecting them to people who uh, can provide skill based acting lessons. Mm -hmm. Right. Or even just, you know, talking to them about, you know, what they need to study, you know, yeah. outside of school or even going to class. Because like you said, I wouldn't even know where to start. Exactly. And I love acting like I love Sister Act 2. I don't know if you've ever seen that, <laughs> but that would have been the start of my acting career in that movie right there. Um, but I I just think back to how no one would have ever told me what the first step was. Mm -hmm. yeah. I saw your, uh, you were, I love this reel. I've watched it a few times. But <laughs> the, the stuff you have to do, self tapes, right? Yeah. And I, the, I lost it because I was like, that's how I feel when I have to do, do a live mm. or I have to put a video on. Yeah. I still have a little bit of what do you call it, imposter syndrome oh wow you know <laughs> things like that and as much as people will speak life into you yeah. you still you still sometimes nah, like is this what I'm supposed so to do that's so true that is so true yeah. I get that so as you so let's talk about um you know you have your show mm -hmm. what are some of your future goals if you were to look at Amaje five years from now mm. ten years from now aside from acting because i know you want to act what type of acting do you see yourself doing are you a drama person are yeah, you into sure. like comedy like <laughs> talk to us about that like it's beautiful that you said that because someone asked me this question and i did any and everything to avoid answering it and it's not because i didn't know mm -hmm. it was because i was fearful of what they would say now we're all human beings we have our reasons why we don't say out boldly what we want mm -hmm. because we're afraid that if they don't come to pass oh you know yeah but you ask me that aside from <laughs> lord i god willing having my own talk show oh my own studio space mm -hmm. where i can do this for the rest of my life mm -hmm. that's literally where i want to be five years down the line and i'm willing to wait for it mm -hmm. because I don't know. I can't describe it because it's so much love for it. Yeah. Uh, acting wise, man, I would love to have my own show as a series regular okay. for any streaming platform. I mean, I'm just trying to get my foot in the door. Yeah. And that's, that's, that takes time. Okay. It takes networking. Yeah. It takes building. And 
all I, what I do know, and this is why I have so much faith in what I believe in is that, you know, what's built for you is going to be for you. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm not, I don't like to say worried or anxious about it. It's mm -hmm. just, I just know it's coming. Yeah. It's just one of those things. Yeah. Like you feel in your gut. Not only do people tell you, but you know it for sure. Yeah. And I'm willing to wait for that breakout role. I'm willing to wait for that series regular role. Man, maybe start a movie one day. I don't, it, mm -hmm. like anything within the arts of acting. Like that's where I want to be yeah. for the rest of my life. Yeah. So it's hard to categorize it as what do you want five years down the line because I see myself behind the camera maybe I might see myself writing or directing hopefully in the future because yeah. you know I'm learning and I'm growing I, I do all this technical stuff from my show so maybe editing who yeah. knows but um any and everything that has to do with the arts in front or behind the camera God willing I'm hoping that's where I'll be yeah in a sense five yeah. to ten years down the line yeah so we were talking about, you know, no's and, and being rejected. Yeah. I know, uh, you know, we've all been rejected and, and just briefly, you know, how does that affect you? Yeah, in many, many, many ways. I mean, like I said before, it takes a huge toll mm -hmm. on you. However, Aspire to Aspire has been my way of handling rejection. Yeah. Because with rejection, we always think it's only us. We mm -hmm. experience it. But no, everyone has. Yeah. However, the common denominator between every guest that I had speak on my show that they kept going mm -hmm. they didn't stop they right. got to get to where they are because they didn't stop and they continue to be rejected because this industry is very challenging however it's not impossible um so Amaji, like i i love how you have talked about um how you've overcome that and how yeah. the people that you really had the opportunity to interview and aspire to aspire have overcome those obstacles and been able to passionately pursue yeah. their dreams which is the goal of this. Yeah. Um, and so I really thank you for joining us today, for Aww. sharing your passions uh, <laughs> and just how you pursue your dreams. So Aww. we're so grateful to have you on. Thank you guys. And for thank you guys me. for joining us. Uh, we're so grateful for Amaje. Uh, and thank you guys for always tuning in. And we hope to see you soon. And don't forget to focus because finding ourselves creates unlimited success. Peace. <laughs>